This is Joe Foley. I am principal trumpet of the Portland Symphony. I've been the principal trumpet since September of 2014. And today I'm going to talk about uh, warming up on a brass instrument. Uh, this is one of the uh, most important things uh, that we need to do as musicians, especially brass players. Um, I'm sure all my colleagues are entirely sick of hearing my warm up from the uh, the, the bowels of Merrill Auditorium when I'm in the back there doing the same thing before every rehearsal and every concert. Um, but it's something that helps me to play uh, at the uh, best level that I can. So um, whether you want to call it a warm-up or a routine, doing something on a daily basis that, that uh, covers as many basics as you can is great. Uh, also making it concise is very important uh, because it is something you want to be able to, to do uh, every day. I have run the gamut from when I was uh, entering college. I had a routine that was about two hours long. And basically, I was playing everything I had ever learned. But by the end of that routine, I couldn't play anything because I was so tired. Uh, I switched to not warming up at all, thinking, I can show them. I can do this. Uh, and what I discovered real quickly was that um, I didn't sound as good because I wasn't uh, taking care of business. I wasn't uh, taking care of my, my uh, machine, if you will. And... Um, making sure I touch on all the aspects of, um, of brass playing that are so important. So uh, when you go into a routine, it's really important that you have um, a goal. Um, it's not just playing through a bunch of notes. And sometimes I get frustrated when I hear students and they're playing uh, the notes uh, that I give them, but they're not really focusing on the goal. And that is to sound great and to play easily, to reinforce all these really, really good habits. Um, my goal when I get out of this routine that basically I've covered um, just about anything that I might have to play on any given day, and I'm not afraid of that. If there's a high note, I've practiced some high notes. If there's some tonguing, I've practiced some tonguing. If there's some loud playing or some soft playing, I feel like I've covered those in my routines. So I'm not going to play through the whole routine because, like I said, it would take, uh, it would take far too long. It would take between 20 and 25 minutes for me most days. Um, but... I am going to give you a synopsis, show you some of the things I, I use and a couple of the things that I focus on. So uh, with brass instruments, uh, I think the first thing that should, should come in every case with the first brass instrument is a little card that says results may vary. Uh, every day uh, feels entirely different. Uh, you know, my wonderful colleagues in the, uh, in the symphony, uh, the woodwind players, I see them, you know, before every rehearsal, and they're sitting there working on their reeds, trying to get just a really nice reed so that they sound great. Um, for us, this is our this is our reed. We have to take care of our lip, and uh, and our breath control. It doesn't mean we use a lot of air playing the trumpet, but we do have to have uh, a good control of how we're using our air. So. Um, what I do when I start my day is I try to sit quietly for just a little bit, focus on what my goals are, and um, after I feel like I'm a little bit in control like that, like I have a good idea what I'm trying to do, I'll start in. Um, I base my routine off a book um, that was written by the principal trumpet player of the Cleveland Orchestra, Mike Sachs. Uh, he's a wonderful trumpet player. Uh, and a great, great teacher. I, I never studied with Mike, but I, I've seen him teach. It's just fantastic. Um, and in this book, which I learned about through a student, um, uh, he breaks down the, the routine into about 16 parts. And I thought, that's just great. Um, I think like most students, you have to adapt things to work for yourself. So I go through uh, what I think are some of the most important aspects of uh, brass playing, just like he outlines in his book, but I don't use necessarily uh, those particular exercises. Um, I will start by playing a little bit of mouthpiece, but for me, playing the mouthpiece could be anywhere from 10 seconds to 30 seconds to maybe a minute. We're just trying to make sure the lip vibrates. So I take my, uh, my mouthpiece out here, and I'll just noodle around a little bit, just see if I can get the sound to come out easily. I'm not trying to do anything spectacular. I'm not even trying to get the cleanest sound in the world. I'm just trying to make sure that it comes out easily. Uh, when I was in college, I was very religious about a, a mouthpiece routine. I would play about 10 or 15 minutes. Um, I found uh, that that actually made my playing uh, more stiff, more tight. So I've abandoned that. I do a little bit to get it going. Uh, and then I get into um, 
working towards some flow studies. But before I do that, um, this is a, a wonderful book that many of you may not know. Um, let's see, what's the note? Foundations, right? Oh, Foundational Method for Trumpet by Jay Rosetto. Um, Jay Rosetto was the teacher of one of our um, frequent extra players in the Portland Symphony, Dana Russian. Uh, and I just stole one of his exercises. I just used this exercise. It's kind of my variation on it. And it's just a noodle. I'm, I'm um, working around one note, just trying to get the air spinning through the trumpet. Not a lot of air, but spinning. Right? Just trying to move some air through the trumpet. Um, and I'll do that for maybe a minute. Uh, from there, I move into a lip bending exercise. Again, I think it's more about how you do the exercise. I'm not really trying to force this. I'm just trying to relax my lips a little bit so my sound is very flexible. Again, very gently, but I find by just sort of stretching like that, it's like being an athlete, just stretching out a little bit helps quite a bit. Uh, next, I move into some flow studies, trying to get um, some really good connections between the notes. Again, these are not magic notes. It's how you do it. If you really focus upon how you connect the notes and trying to get a beautiful sound, I think it's very helpful. The exercises that I use are one of two things. Uh, one is based on Vincent Chikowitz, uh, his long tone studies. So I'll do something like this. Uh, this is my variation of it. So I add a little tag there. I do some lip slurs, I do a little tonguing. And I'll go through that in the different keys. Um, from there, when I get down to the, the, the bottom of the trumpet, I switch over into uh, some James Stamp Studies. I couldn't find my stamp book, but this is a, a companion book that's really good. Um, so playing some pedal tones, again, trying to get my lip to relax and gradually expanding my range as well. play down into the cellar. I know those notes don't sound great, but again, I'm helping my lip relax. So I'll play through some of those. Then I move into another Chikowitz uh, flow study, gradually trying to increase my range, something like this. So um, I'm trying to increase my range, my flexibility, but again, not forcing anything. Uh, from there, I'll show you my old school book, my Clark Technical Studies. I'll do a little of this to introduce some articulation. Really up to this point in the warm-up, I haven't articulated at all. Again, this is my variation on some Clark. play some through some different keys like that. One of the real war horses of the trumpet's uh, technical studies is the uh, Daily Drills and Technical Studies by Max Schlossberg. Uh, when I play my scales and my arpeggios, I'm trying to get as many things done in this uh, concise period of time. So I try working on different keys. I have a whole system for that, but I only play about four keys per day. Um, I try to add my articulation and my range into my scale studies. So I might start down near the bottom of the trumpet. As I get a little bit more warmed up, I might increase the range. came out. 
Um, and I'll do that every day. Now, I certainly couldn't do that when I began, but um, you know, working on that year after year and uh, trying to build in small steps, uh, that's what helps increase your range. I, I do the same thing with arpeggios after that. Going up and down the, uh, the trumpet uh, to cover all my range um, and different articulations as well. Um, um, I will add in after this, this is one of the great books of all time, the Schubert uh, Lip Trainers. Um, and this is sort of near the end of my warm-up. I'll start adding <clears throat> a little target practice. Um, in other words, making challenging entrances that we have to do on the trumpet. Uh, that's one of the hardest things about playing the trumpet is, is coming in cold. My colleagues in the string section are, are playing all the time. Um, I don't think they ever get cold up there, but when you're sitting in the back in the brass section, a lot of times we may sit for 10, 15, 20 minutes sometimes before we have to play. So I will work on some uh, entrances like that. I'll also do some tonguing studies. Uh, I'm showing you all my old school books here. This is the Goldman uh, uh, Practical Studies for Trumpet. And I do a little tonguing exercise out of this where I do both my uh, single tonguing, my K tonguing, and my uh, multiple tonguing both backwards and forwards. And I'll do that in different registers. Um, and towards the end of the routine, I will add in some multiple tonguing. Uh, we played the Ravel Piano Concerto this year. Um, I was playing that, boy, uh, every day in all these variations for, you know, about five or ten minutes. Um, a lot of times my tonguing stuff will be uh, repertoire based. So, uh, again, that's a short version of uh, the routine. There would be more multiple tonguing here. I'd probably play a cornet solo like... Um, Carnival of Venice or an excerpt like, um, oh, I don't know, maybe uh, Capriccio Espanol or, or Ravel, things like that. So um, I can't wait to see all of you back uh, in Merrill Auditorium, uh, my colleagues, the audiences, our wonderful audiences that are so supportive. Um, I look forward to seeing you. Um, I'm looking forward to, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be a faculty member at this uh, program called the New England, New England Virtual Trumpet Seminar with some colleagues from the Boston Symphony and the Metropolitan Opera this summer. So if you want to see that entire <laughs> warm-up one morning, you'll see me do that whole thing. Um, so thank you so much for, for, uh, for joining me for this short period of time. Um, I appreciate it. I, I hope everybody's well. Um, I hope I was able to share a little bit. Uh, you can always reach me through the symphony offices. I'd be glad to try to answer any questions you may have about this. Thank you very much, everyone.